Welcome back to Odd Socks. So I've had a few days off because I've been working quite a few hours the last few days and the allotment with all the extra rain that we've had has really boomed and it's got to the stage where I need to carry on harvesting. Now I have been harvesting some of my peas, some of my broad beans, a cabbage or two. All my red currants are harvested and majority of my black currants are already harvested. They were ready really quite early this year compared to previous years and it was so laden with fruit I was so worried about coming down and finding nothing at all on those currant bushes because of the local pigeons. So I've managed to get quite a few kilos of black currants already and I've already made some jams and some potted fruits but I thought today we would harvest some other things from our allotment. So this here is one of our main brassica cage. Now we have got one or two elsewhere, but this we added some pipe work and obviously the netting just so we we're able to stand up in here because over previous years with lower cabbage cages, it gets very old very quick when you have to keep removing all the netting just to get in here and weed. Now we do need to weed. I have got a few nettles coming in here and there a few creeping buttercups but it has been much much easier to manage this brassica cage this year now the weather may not have been great for some of the warmth loving veg this year but for things like brassicas peas even potatoes it's been fantastic as you can see in here some of these cabbages have gotten really really big now i'm not going to harvest all these cabbages which are all down this one side all in one go i'm going to try and space them out now we have had some losses, normally right at the beginning when we had that mass of slugs, which thankfully has calmed down a little bit at least. But we have started putting some kale in here in between the gaps, cabbages that we had left over. We have got sprouts down the middle in a big row and then we've got purple sprouting broccoli that has gone in later on earlier this year. So we'll have the overwintering on all this side here. Now this side will be harvested as and when over the next month or two and then we'll be planting more brassicas and things to overwinter. Things like the Savoy which I really do enjoy. I'll probably be growing more of the greens as well through the winter months because they are looking incredibly healthy. But today there's about two or three cabbages I really do need to harvest. Now this one is one that definitely needs to be picked, but I'm really, really happy with this particular cabbage. It's looking really quite good. Now I was expecting a lot more slug damage on these brassicas, but I think they've gone after everything else that we've had on the allotment so far this year. But in the future, I'm gonna try and move away from these headed cabbages because the amount of slugs and snails and having to deal with that all the time when you've got very limited time to prep all your food and things. I think the leaf variety is the way I'm going to go in the future. But this really is beautiful. And to be honest, it's not a bad size. And this cabbage, this giant monster is a greyhound. Now it was looking absolutely fantastic for quite a while but now it's got a few bits of eaten marks on it. Now this is going to be harvested today because it is starting to split because it is a monster. So let's get this one out of the ground. That is a beauty. Now this has got a lot of damage on the outside, but we're not gonna be eating those leaves anyway. For this type of cabbage, it really is the heart. And you can hear how hollow this particular is. It's such a shame though, that it has been eaten a little bit by these pests. But to be honest, I don't mind a little bit of a munch. And if you're expecting pristine conditions off your brassicas, you're not gonna get them unless you use strong pesticides or chemicals or you've got your permaculture setting just right where the slugs and snails will either 
not be around as much or will be attracted to other things. But for me, I am very pleased with this cabbage. Now the last of the cabbages I'm harvesting today, because I don't need to take them all, I can actually harvest them as and when we need them. But I'm going to be taking one of these spring greens and I've just got to decide which one to have. Now these won't form a tight head, you'll have a looser leaf. Now this kind of greens is something that I much, much prefer than the other cabbages. So I'm going to take one and have some with our dinner tonight. So I think I'm going to have this one because then it will give it a little bit more room for other things too. Now in the meantime of me harvesting these, I will start sowing brassicas to come into this cage through the winter. I've also got to find somewhere for my swedes because the pigeons absolutely love swedes and so does the cabbage white butterfly I found. Not that I've seen any cabbage whites at all so far this year. But I'm just going to get this one harvested. That's not a bad size either. Again, it's something that you use for the leaves and apparently you can grow these all year round. So I think we had the least amount of damage from pests on these particular cabbages, on these spring greens. So I think for us on this site at the moment, this is probably the way forward. It's got plenty of leaves on it. We can get plenty in the ground. We can grow these closer together too. So I think for us, at least, I think this is probably a win. But how fantastic is that? Now, one of my most favourite crops is beetroot. I really enjoy beetroot. And in fact, I've still got some in the freezer from last year because I grew an awful lot. Now, I've got different stages of beetroot. This is one of the older ones. The one at the front is slightly newer sown. I've also got them by the polytunnel and I've also got them a little bit lower down in the ground. I always love to multi-sow and as they grow or clump together, we can thin them out as and when they get to a certain size. Now this one is quite large. Now I don't normally like picking them this big because they can go a little bit woody, but at this time of year, I don't find it a major issue. As it gets a bit later on in the year, yes, the woodiness becomes quite extreme in some cases, but that looks beautiful. And this one is also looking good. Obviously not as big as the first one, but these will be absolutely fantastic with my lunch today. Now the rest of these aren't quite ready. Oh, maybe this one here. And this one's a little bit harder to get because it is part of an, a group. So I'm gonna try and be a bit careful and twist and pull. Now with that group of about four or five, that will give the rest a little bit of room to grow. And that's the great thing about beetroot. Harvest them as and when you want, and it gives them more room to grow and to get bigger. So that's why I love to multi-sow my beetroots. But these look absolutely beautiful, and I can't wait to eat these for lunch. In this bed is the earlier cabbage that we actually sowed. Now, obviously I lost a lot of carrot seedlings over the last couple of months. And every time I've sowed carrots, most of them have been eaten by those slugs and snails. But some have managed to survive. And some of the newer sowings, unfortunately, as soon as the seedlings have come up, the slugs and the snails have mowed them down. But I will try and do another sowings of carrots it's a little bit late but i will try and do a bit more before i lose my chance completely but some of these carrots 
especially some of these are absolutely, well, I've managed to pull the bottom root off on that one, but they look absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm only going to take one or two out of this bed. But look at those. How beautiful are those? Now, these are grown in a normal no-dig bed, so a nice compost layer, and then there's a heavy layer of clay soil underneath. Loads of stones, loads of other bits and pieces, organic matter in this bed. The beds are fed every year with a new dose of compost, so it suits everything. So if anybody tells you you cannot grow carrots in a rich, dense soil or compost, or, or you need to add sand or anything like that to grow anything carrots, then I'm sorry, but it's not necessarily true. And in fact, every time I have tried to grow carrots in a sand rich tub or anything like that, it's never worked for me personally. Now it does work for many, many people, but to be honest, you can grow carrots directly in your beds. And in fact, mine have always grown much better and healthier in this environment. So these will go towards tonight's dinner too. Can't wait to try these. Now I can't remember the variety off the top of my head. It was either Nantes or the Giant Reds, which I don't think these were the Giant Reds, but I'll put it up on the screen here. But so far, if it wasn't for the slugs this year, we would have had a really great carrot harvest. Now, as you can see, my rhubarb really has picked up later on in the year. It was quite sickly and spindly, and now it's looking really, really healthy. But the thing is with rhubarb, it always tastes much, much better earlier on in the year. But I am going to harvest some of these because some of these are very big. Now, I don't want to take too many because this year, I actually think I want to make sure that I give it plenty of leafage to carry on growing strong to see if that actually makes any difference for next year. But at the end of the season, some of these are going to get moved anyway. So next year, I probably won't get much a good harvest on the ones I've moved at least. But I'm desperate to get some large harvests of rhubarb because I have plenty of plans for it. And it's not just the rhubarb crumble. So before the season's out and before it gets too much, I'm going to harvest these, well, some of these. Now this is absolutely covered in aphids on the leaves. So these leaves obviously are not edible and these will end up on the compost pile, hopefully reducing some of these black fly anyway. Now, to be honest, it's this plant here that seems to have got the, the biggest stems. But they've also split quite easily as well. I just don't think it's been a good year so far for rhubarb. Now, some of this rhubarb has been split and it's a little bit worse for wear, but there's plenty on there that I can use and pop in the freezer till I get a suitable amount and then I can make some stuff with it. But any harvest is better than none at all. And at least it's got a little bit healthier through the year. Now, all this lush green leaves that's on it at the moment, I'm going to leave the rest and all that energy will go back into the crown. And hopefully next year it will be a much stronger plant. Now we're back in my polytunnel and there is plenty of chilies to actually harvest in here. And in fact, even some of the peppers. Now, because I number my varieties and I really do have a memory like a sieve, it is unbelievable how easy I forget stuff. It is incredibly frustrating. I'm going to harvest some of these and I'm going to put them on the bottom of the plant on the pot on the surface of the soil. 
and then I'm going to bag them differently it's just so I can trial what flavours are what because some of these chilies I've not actually grown or eaten before and this year it was all about trial so I wanted to see what was the best flavour for cooking or grinding down so that's going to be the experiment over the next few weeks is testing out all these different chilli peppers. Some are slightly more fruity than others and some I think are incredibly hot. Especially some of the number threes which was the Caribbean blend which could be anything from the Caribbean hot variety. So I'll be interested to try those. Now some of these that I have got to harvest is some of these sweet paprika peppers. Now I'm going to take some of these and these have grown really well and to be honest I have never harvested peppers this early on in the season. It is quite crazy. Now I really did go for a mix of peppers this year because I really wanted to try a range of varieties. I also wanted to test out the polytunnel. Now I know I need to make some amendments on this bed, on these beds. I need to add a lot more soil because obviously most of these things that I'm planting in here, I have to dig a hole with a little hand trowel to actually do the peppers or the chilies or whatever it is I'm growing. So I need a little bit more soil depth because the clay underneath is incredibly weedy. And as I'm digging the soil to put those holes, it's bringing up all those old seeds. And this area was incredibly weedy. So I'm gonna pop those underneath that particular chili plant. Now this one is also a sweet pepper, sweet propica pepper. So I'm gonna pop those in the same pile. Now some of these aren't as ripe, but we'll have a look. these are my early jalapenos and they're much smaller than I'm used to but they're ripe and they're ready so these are coming off now this one is a capia pointed red and again I have never had peppers ripen this early Now this is a Caribbean blend, so I have no idea what this one is. But it will be interesting to find out. Now apart from some lettuces which I can harvest, which are still doing really well, but I do need to sow some fresh ones. I have got plenty of peas. Now I have been harvesting peas over the last few weeks podding them and popping them into the freezer. Now, if you saw the videos from last season, you would have seen our peas were much bigger and more dense and we would have had an awful lot more peas off of it. We didn't go so heavy this year on our peas. I didn't want to sow too many, but they're not looking at their best at the moment and they're starting to come to the end of their season. Now, to me, it actually feels like it's a little bit quicker than previous years, but I'll still get a half decent harvest. And most of the ones that I self sowed directly into the soil did eventually come up, but it wasn't a great year for seedlings in the ground. Slugs and snails love them. Now my broad beans. Now my broad beans this year, I wasn't so protective over them. They have grown really well and we have been harvesting for the last three to four weeks, in fact, our broad beans. They really have kept going this year. Now, normally we would pinch out the tops to stop all this black fly, but you know, I wanted to give the ladybirds something to eat this year. I haven't been washing the tops off with water. I haven't been pricking the tops. I have just left them be and the beans have been quite good. Now, the thing is with broad beans, yes, black flies a giant pan in the backside and can make it quite sickly. 
but the beans themselves are actually in a pod which is protected. So to be honest, in general, I don't mind a bit of black fly. It doesn't really cover much else apart from maybe the rhubarb leaves. But in general, that's again, not a big deal. But by podding these, these are still in perfect condition. In fact, I really do love a raw broad bean. But that's what we've been doing so far this last couple of days is trying to harvest some of our crops. Now, the only harvest left that I really do need to crack on and do is my blackcurrant bushes. Now, my blackcurrant bushes I did pick. I think it was close to about 10 or more kilos so far. And then I've given it a break and I really do need to harvest the rest. Now, these blackcurrants really have been abundant this year. I am in absolute shock how much it's actually produced. And as you can see from the berries, they really are big and juicy. Now, I'm not a big fan of these actually raw. They're okay if you get them really, really super ripe. But a lot of the times, to get them that ripe, unless you cover with a net, you'll actually find that the birds really do enjoy these too. But I need to come in and I need to get the rest of these here. Now I found that my black currants all ripen at different times. So I don't find cutting off the branches and taking off the berries all in one go very good for us here. I want to get the most of my crops. So I'll go around and I'll pick by hand the bunches of the right ones, not necessarily individually and leave the rest to actually ripen on the plant. That, then I get more of a harvest and there's an awful lot less wastage. But again, it all depends on how much time you have and also how much patience, because to be honest, this is quite time consuming. And these two bushes, which were here when we first took on this allotment, they were cut back hard when the other person left. So last year we actually only got a handful literally of black currants last year. But that cut actually really did benefit it. And this year it has grown in an abundance. And the amount of fruits on here is amazing. Now there's lots of things I want to do with these. So it was definitely something that I was really grateful for a harvest this year from. Now this isn't a bad little harvest. Now this is nothing compared to what I've been harvesting already. And this is just a little taster of something that I've got so far today. I will harvest more of the polytunnel. I have more peppers, more chilies to harvest. But to be honest, it's so hot in there at the moment with the sun beating down. I don't want to get all hot and sweaty today at the moment. And I'll probably come back when it's a bit cooler later on today. I'll probably harvest a lot of peas and some more of my broad beans sitting there watching a program later on podding and shelling and returning all those pods to the compost heap but even though this year has been a really weird year in general it hasn't been too bad i think my personal life at the moment with the amount of time that i have has really quite interfered and i'm a little bit more behind than i would have been in general with my sowings plantings and actually weeding and as you look around the allotment, there is a lot of weeding to be done. But we'll get there, it's no big deal. Don't be afraid if you don't reach your goals one year, because it really will put you off growing throughout the season. It won't be long now before I'm starting to think of my winter produce that will either be coming outside under nets, normally my brassicas and things like that or things that will be going eventually into the polytunnel. Now this polytunnel, I might not grow anything in through the winter, but the other polytunnel where all my tomatoes are growing, which are doing very well, that will probably have wintering veg in. But for the newer polytunnel, I think I'm gonna spend the winter sorting the beds out, getting extra compost down, so I can get a really cracking year for next year. I'm excited to see how the melons are going to do. They are getting very big and I'm hoping for a really good melon harvest. But for the beginning of July, to have chilli peppers, peppers, all sorts of things like that, that normally are much later in the season, I am truly grateful. 
So thanks for joining me guys. This is what I've been up to the last couple of days and I really hope that your harvest that you're starting to bring in now is truly bountiful. So thanks for watching guys and I shall see you in the next video.